inspiring habits. Attitudes, mentality, and mindset. If you want to be an impactful personality, you have to develop certain types of thinking and perceptions that change the way you see yourself and see the world. If I could just sit down with you and we could talk just one on one, and if I could do anything for you, if you'd say, John, what is it that you could do for me that would help me to be successful in life? The thing that I would do for you, if I could, is I would teach you how to think correctly. You see, the largest gap between successful and unsuccessful people in life is the thinking gap. I'm not talking about being smart. I'm not talking about an IQ. I'm talking about how you think, how I think. Successful people think differently than unsuccessful people. And the Apostle Paul understood that. It doesn't matter how big you are, how intelligent you are, how many degrees you get. It's your mind that keeps you small. You don't need to be intelligent. You don't need to be smart. You don't need to have a certain height. You don't need to have a certain weight. You don't need to have any kind of advantage. The attitude is the difference. Attitude. I love this passage in Ecclesiastes. Wise thinking leads to right living. Stupid thinking lives, leads to wrong living. How true that is. And in your sermon notes, what I want you to know today is what Paul wants you to know out of Philippians 4, that your attitude, my attitude, is the paintbrush of the mind. In other words, you and I hold the paintbrush in our hand and we get to determine the picture we put in the mind that we have. And it doesn't matter how small you are or how un unintelligent you may seem to be or how much you don't have. It is the thinking of the person that makes them see circumstances differently. The attitude, therefore, is a difference. People ask me, how am I doing? My answer is, I have no problems. The word problem is a human definition of an opportunity to grow. If you call it a problem, it's a negative. If you see it as an opportunity, it becomes a positive. I'm going to describe in verses 4 through 7, I'm going to describe a fulfilled life. Now Paul here in this little short paragraph says, let me describe to you what a fulfilled life looks like. Four things in your notes. You ready? Number one, a fulfilled life celebrates God. A person that is living a full life, is their heart is full of celebration to God and who he is and what he's done. Number two, a fulfilled life adds value to people. Number three, a fulfilled life is one that has the ability to give God your concerns or your worries. In other words, you can take the stress that you have and you can, you can my, mother, my mother's favorite verse, my mother's favorite verse was, was the verse out of Peter where, where it says, cast all of your anxieties on God because he cares for you. A fulfilled life, Paul says, is one that can take the worries and the anxieties and can cast them upon God. And number four, a fulfilled life experiences God's wholeness, the wholeness of God. Now, he said, this is what a fulfilled life looks like. And then what I love about this passage, starting with verses eight and nine, he talks to us about how to do this. He says, basically, to you and me, if you want to have a fulfilled life, you have to fill your mind correctly. Again, going to the passage in Ecclesiastes, wise thinking leads to good living, stupid thinking lives, leads to bad living. Now, what, 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 what is the Ecclesiastes writer saying? If, if, you, if you think right, things come out right. If you think wrong, things come out wrong. And, and Paul says, if you want to have a fulfilled life, you've got to fill your mind correctly. And what I love about verses 8 and 9 is he literally is going to show us in a very simple, practical way how to do that. Ephesians 3 verse 20, don't you laugh at the Bible. The verse said, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above, far beyond all you can ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that worketh within you, to him be glory. Attitude is a product of belief. You cannot have an attitude beyond your belief. So your attitude comes from your belief system. I remember sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I remember sleeping one time on a mat and that sheet never kept the mosquitoes out. All around me was poverty, but we didn't know that because everybody was poor. 
the only way you know you're poor is when you meet the rich person and every opportunity was around me to think negative and I remember you know my mother and father would tell us things to to fix our belief system they would say you can do anything you want to do son and they said that when I sleeping on the floor it's your mind they were working on my belief system and then they taught us the Bible now I don't know about you and your belief but the Bible but the Bible made me what I am today so don't you talk bad about the Bible and if you don't believe in the Bible that's okay I'm doing just fine believe me and the Bible helped me become what I am but it was that book that checked my thinking how do you think write this down attitude is a product of belief let's go to the passage summing it all up friends I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true noble reputable authentic compelling gracious the best not the worst the beautiful not the ugly things to praise not things to curse put into practice what you've learned from me what you heard and what you saw do that and God who makes everything work together will work into your most excellent harmonies when I was a kid my my parents paid me an allowance to read books they selected the books and every day we had to read 30 minutes a day and one of the one of the things that we read one of the books we read was a book by James Allen and this book as a man thinketh had an incredible impact upon my life and here's a statement from the book the greatest discovery in my generation is that human beings can alter their lives by altering their attitude Wow! that your life can be changed my life can be changed if we just change our attitude the, the most the most important real estate we, we the most important real estate in life is six inches between the ears how we think no one can live beyond the limits of their belief so if you want to live beyond what you're living now you have to change your belief system when you have the discovery of a new belief system your life is what you think it should be that's exactly what you are right now you are what you thought you should be and if you don't like who you are you got to change what you think you should be the secret to anyone rising is what happens in their belief system no amount of training or management methods or titles no amount of promotion or associations with rich people or smart people can ever substitute for the right attitude you gotta first change your perception of who you are and that starts with a belief system secondly you must change your perception of why you think you exist and number three your sense of significance once you discover no matter where you are right now it doesn't matter I don't care what situation you're in now where you're working or what situation you're in your perception of who you are you've got to change it and most of our perceptions are other people's concepts of us and therefore we don't have self concept we got other concepts what is your perception of who you are and the second one why do you think you exist you got to discover that you were born for something some reason there's some purpose for your life if you don't discover that you'll always have a job and we'll bury you in an average grave with an average tombstone and so they always tell you go to school get an education so you can get a job in other words we've all been taught to be employed not deployed they never say stay in school so you can own a business they don't even think that way they mean they don't, it doesn't even cross your parents don't even think that way and so you follow the convention of the community discover that you are important to the human race you are important to the world you are important to your universe when I had to grapple with that question it was tough because I've been taught by society like you have that you are just a social security number or some NIB number or you some just kind of a, a, a worker in the system but that's not true you were born to do something very significant in the world and you have to get to the point where you believe that I'm gonna teach you biblically what it's like to have a great attitude are you ready he said people with a great attitude possess first of all a teachable spirit they're teachable they're approachable look at verse 9 put into practice 
what you've learned from me, what you've heard, what you saw, what you realized. Teachability requires repeated, long, hard looks in the mirror. In other words, when we're teachable, we're willing to, we're willing to look hard in the mirror and see us. Teachability allows God and others to speak into our lives. That's what a teachable spirit is. And Paul says, if you want to have the right attitude, let others come and speak into your life. Let me speak into your life. And all, all, Paul, all Paul is saying is, in this area of attitude, when, when we want to fix somebody else, it's normally the fact that we need to be fixed. The faults of others are the faults we have ourselves. And we see others not as they are. We see others as we are. And, and Paul says, Paul says, if you really want to have a great attitude, have a teachable spirit. Number two, he says, take responsibility for your attitude. He said, I want you to take responsibility for the attitude that you have. You chose it. Be responsible for it. And, and let me, he shows us in verses eight and nine, he shows us how to be responsible for our attitude. He says three things. He says, fill your mind on good things. So he says, okay, to take responsibility for your attitude, put good stuff in. You, you can't put bad stuff in and have good stuff come out. So he said, first responsibility is select what you put in your mind. Then secondly, he says, when you put good stuff in, the second way you fix your attitude is meditate on, the, on that good stuff. Meditate on good things in verse 8. And he says, you not only meditate on good things, but practice good things. In other words, not only let it go through your mind, but let it get into your actions. And he says, take responsibility for the attitude you have. And if you do those three things, if you put good things in your mind, if you meditate on those good things, and then if you practice those good things, the apostle Paul says, now you are taking responsibility for your attitude. Think about it now. What would happen to you today? What would happen to me today if we say, okay, I'm going to be responsible for the mind, for my attitude, and I'm going to do those three things. I'm going to fill my mind with good stuff. I'm going to meditate on that good stuff, and I'm going to practice that good stuff. You can have potential, but if you don't have the belief, your potential becomes a victim of your present belief. I am giving you my secret to life right here. Belief is so powerful, it can make an elephant act like a sheep in the presence of a lion. You know... Normally people who are insecure, whenever they meet somebody who is confident, they always call the confident arrogant. <laughs> when you discover who you are, you can't help but be confident. I don't pretend, I don't try to have confidence. If you try, that means you ain't got it. It's you're faking it. Confidence is a product of belief. What you believe about yourself determines the way you think about yourself and the way you think about yourself is the way you behave. And you behave bold and confident and fearless because there's some things you discovered about you and about life that makes life change a perception. First of all, your attitude got to be right. Then you must marry that to attributes. That means gifts you were born with. Then you got to marry that to attitude. That means now you got to educate and train those gifts. That's why you read and study and go to school for your, at, for your aptitude to be increased. And then your altitude means you got to change the level of associations you are in. You know, it's amazing. When you change your aptitude, you normally want to change your altitude. So here's a thought to take back to work with you. If you keep running into pigeons and ducks and tobacco doves, you are flying to low. No one is responsible for your life except you. I had to take charge of my life as a teenager. And at age 13, I discovered who I was. I became a problem to the whole family. My mom used to say to me, she'd say, you are a different boy. You are a different child. But something happened to me at age 13. I discovered myself. Different was simply meaning you don't think like the rest of the kids That's all it means and remember thinking is belief system being exposed and therefore I Married my attitude and my attributes and my aptitude changed and I began to study for a different reason 
and suddenly my altitude changed I started attracting different types of friends most of the baloney we have in life we packed in our own pail somebody else didn't slip it in on us somebody else isn't doing a little sneakeroo we did it Paul says people with a great attitude possess a teachable spirit which means they look in the mirror they take correction they take responsibility for their attitude we already fill your minds meditate practice okay number three they travel the high road they travel the high road of life you see God chooses what we go through but we choose how we go through it and the Apostle Paul in verse 8 does a phenomenal job teaching high road look what he says fill your minds and meditate on what the best that's high road not the worst that's low the beautiful that's high not the ugly that's low things to praise that's high not things to curse that's low in other words he says choose to think and choose to meditate and choose to practice the best things in life there are sins in life that'll keep you outside the house and those sins are the sins of the spirit and the flesh it is your belief system which controls your behavior two people can be going through the very same situation one has a good attitude one has a bad attitude two people can be going through a very difficult situation and one sees faith and, and, and stays encouraged and strong and the other one grabs hold of fear and, and, and embraces it until pretty soon they begin to shrink away from life itself. Now Paul says travel the high road and, and, and there are three roads to travel in your notes. The low road and that's where we treat people worse than, than they treat us. The middle road where we treat people the same as they treat us and the high road where we treat people better than they treat us. Wow. Number four, understand the value. W. Clement Stone said there's little difference in people, but that little difference makes a big difference. The little difference is attitude. The big difference is whether it's positive or whether it's negative. And Paul understood the value of a good attitude. Look what he says. He said, when you fill your mind and meditate and practice good thinking, the result is God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. You know, a seed can be placed on a windowsill in your tiled bathroom and stay there for 50 years and the tree never come out. Even though the seed has a tree. You know, trees are not in the soil. They are trapped in a seed. It is a victim of the environment. If you can just get that seed off that windowsill and put it in soil with a little bit of water, here comes the future. That's the way life is. You are no different from a seed. And every one of you that walked through that door today is a seed that was sent to the planet to produce a tree to serve the world your fruit. That's why you were born. There are some folks in your life right now who are very toxic. They will pollute your seed. You'll never come out. Have you noticed that people who ain't going nowhere want you to go with them? Folks who ain't doing nothing in life want you to do it with them? This is why you got to break away from your best friend sometime to become better. You outgrow people, so know when to leave. So coming to a summit like this and sitting among people like this, this is fertilizer. This whole week, is a seed bed it's soil for you to put yourself in matter of fact when you leave here imagine you gotta prepare yourself you gotta go back to those rocky people in your job rocks I say rocks even the music you listen to gotta be careful it can be poison to your germination of your seed the next time someone says they want to get to know you ask them are you fertilizer or rock your ability you never receive it you came with it but your ability that you were born with is trapped by the mentality that they gave you from the, your, your, your culture. This is why to be great, you gotta divorce yourself from your traditions and your culture. Because convention makes no room for creativity. It doesn't allow you to believe beyond the norm. Matter of fact, they want you to fit in, not stand out. The greatest revenge in life they say is success. It's not ability, it's mentality. And so if you wanna change, 
you got to work on this attitude the text says that when they went into the land to check out the land that was already theirs according to promise they all came back and ten of them told Moses that the land they saw had big giants in them and then they also told Moses that we were like grasshoppers in their eyes now they never talked to the, to the giants to find out if that's what giants thought about them you are the way you see yourself do you think you're a grasshopper you have to nurture yourself so that you can produce the right attitudes and nurture means to feed yourself the right information we are what we think and we become what we continue to think the social environment is just making you afraid to come out and take what's yours in life to change your life you must change your mind success keeps the right company and deep inside of you is a person no one knows yet